So today we are going to be doing the ascendant and rising sign of the mean little fellows known as Scorpios. So Scorpio ascendant and rising sign and what their personality is like. And if you're new to my channel, this is not your personality like sun sign personality. Oh, I'm a Scorpio. So I'm this, this and this. No, rising sign and ascendant is quite different. Rising sign which is the ascendant, it maps out your entire life the minute you're born. So rising sign simply is the sign that was rising on the east where the sun rises from at the time of your birth. Okay, so if you're born, let's say on, uh, I don't know, September 14th, uh, 1986 at 7.55 p.m. At the time you were being born and Scorpio was rising from the east, that becomes your ascendant, your rising sign, the first house of your birth chart. What does that mean? That means it sets the foundational boundary of your life situation. What kind of family you're going to be coming through? What kind of siblings really, uh, really what kind of siblings you will be having, and what kind of a foundational um, relationship you will have? Your education, your marriage, your career. So everything I will tell you how the foundation is like. However, the good or bad depends on how the planets are placed in there. Okay, the lords of those houses, how they're placed, and that will determine the good or bad. So let's get started with Scorpio Ascendance. So Scorpio personality, the first house, you know, it is very dynamic. It is very secretive. It is very intense. It is very dominating. And it is willing to win over its goal by any means possible. Meaning that they can, they can actually get into quite a physical, um, you know, trouble. In their life and they can even get into physical fights they since the first house represents the body they can actually also be abusive to that body secretly where nobody knows that if you have a scorpio ascendant or you know you could be doing all sorts of drugs or experimenting with something while nobody knows about it because of the fact that intensity that you know you're going through a certain situation in your life that you're so intense about and you so want to achieve it that when you don't achieve it you self-destruct so it kind of becomes a self-destructive body if Mars is not placed well in the horoscope. Because of Mars, not only rules the original house of the Aries, the first house, but now that Scorpio comes over, so it becomes a double Mars energy. So this is why these guys kind of go crazy when their mental, you know, stability is not there. But, but, these guys usually are born in the family of intellects or family of religious people. So either their parents are going to be from have masters and PhD or their parents will be in social and religious work all throughout their life because the second house of family is represented by Sagittarius whose Lord is Jupiter. So Jupiter, you know, controls their second house of uh, wealth, second house of family legacy, and it controls the fifth house as well. So these are two houses that actually control the financial assets. So usually these guys end up, you know, investing their family assets and properties into any kind of, you know, investment, any kind of stock market. They will take, they will be good at um, taking their family wealth and wealth and investing that because Jupiter is ruling their second house of wealth and fifth house of speculative, you know, businesses. So usually they end up doing that, uh, but their upbringing is very much filled with wisdom either educational, academic, or religious, okay? Their communication with their siblings, their mental state, the third house, their courage is very disciplined, okay? It is very disciplined, but it also kind of is pessimistic because these guys get into that tug of war with the mind that, should I do this, should I not do this? What if this happens? What if that happens? Okay, I know I'm about to do this, but what if, this happens. They're constantly worried. They're paranoid. So their mental state, which is the third house also, you know, makes them, makes them procrastinate in their field of thinking, okay? Their relationship with the siblings will mostly depend, of course, on the condition of Saturn, which rules the third house of Capricorn, but it is very structured. They will only communicate with the siblings when, you know, they need to, when they have to and it is going to be constructed with a certain boundary. Home life. Home life as well is ruled by Saturn, Aquarius, okay? But the home life nourishment kind of becomes worldly, kind of becomes, you know, um, again, because of the second house, Jupiter, 
and Aquarius ruling the fourth house, it always is about the world wisdom. What is this world about? You know, reaching out to a different multicultural aspect in your life through your parents, okay? Also, this represents dealing with real estate matters because Saturn is also responsible for real estate. And your ascendant, Scorpio, Mars, is actually the signifactor of real estate. So you can also end up investing your family property, you know, into certain business. You can be in the property business because of this, okay? So because Jupiter rules their second house of, you know, family upbringing, these guys usually can be very good in, ac uh, in academic studies because Jupiter is controlling the house of uh, second house and the fifth house of studies, speculative business, creativity, and children. You know, so they're with they most of the time, you know, they are always good in education. They're always good in studies. They give open creativeness to their children. They let their children be. They say, okay, you have a talent at the age of five for piano. Okay, I will not force math on you. Go, go focus on your um, piano. Let's see what you can do with that. They're quite open about this and they're very creative too because Pisces is also, it's a water sign in the sign of creativity. So they do have that creative niche, but that creativity will always be found with some sort of a wisdom, with some sort of a spiritual message in their creativity, okay? Their sixth house, okay? Their sixth house, which again is ruled by Mars. They are able to, they will do whatever it can to win over their enemies. They just cannot face defeat. These, this is one ascendant that, you know, these guys can kill. And of course, there are killers out there who are Scorpio ascendant. But depending upon how Mars is, you know, uh, situated, these guys are willing to kill to win over their enemies. They will do whatever they can. They're very secretive. So ascendant, which is Scorpio, very secretive. Sixth house, again, Mars, enemies. They're secretly, they will always, you know, plan something against their enemies. Um, they are also, their everyday life can also be full with a lot of challenges, but these guys love that. They cannot stay without challenges. Scorpio ascendant versus some other ascendant like Libra. Libra lady doesn't want that challenge. Scorpio ascendant says, no, I want enough enemies so I can defeat them. It's like the general saying, dude, I don't feel like a general unless I shoot uh, some, some people out there, okay? They're partners. Their wife or their husband is very beautiful, first of all, because it's ruled by Taurus, Venus, it's Venus is sign. And their wife and husband are actually kind of, and, and, and here's the thing, usually it's the opposite that attracts. But Scorpio and Taurus, both are fixed signs. And so Scorpio loves the challenge of their husband and wife to have their own determination. They want to have their husband and wife to have their own opinion so they can counteract with them. However, they're very protective of them because of the Scorpio nature. They're very, very protective of their, you know, spouse, husband or wife. They're, they're immensely involved romantically with them. These guys have so much passion in life, the ascendant, that they're willing to die for their other half if, they f if they're deeply in love with them, which again depends on the seventh house and the ascendant, you know, yourself and your spouse, how well that relationship is. But most of the time, they're emotionally invested into their marriage. Now, the eighth house, which represents their longevity and which represents, you know, their sudden changes and fluctuations in life, their in-laws, uh, they have a very good communication with the in-laws. You know, usually they want to communicate because it's represented by Gemini. However, they can have really quick ups and downs in changes, ups and downs in moods, even though it's not the moon, which moon is represented by the mind, but the eighth house brings so many fluctuations and eight and eighth house is Gemini. Gemini is about quick, short distance travel. Okay, quick travel and their ascendant is secretive. Okay, secretive nature, the detective nature. So usually these people can become those firefighters, ambulance drivers, detectives, police, because they have to be at one place this way, one place this way. They have to make quick decisions. And what the mistake they make, Scorpio Ascendant, is they make impulsive wrong decisions, you know, especially early on in their life. Because the eighth house, Gemini, you know, makes them quickly, you know, say, no, 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 I need to make a decision now. They just don't have that patience. But they always want to, you know, make that decision and go with it, whether it's right or wrong. Okay. And their ninth house, again, it is emotionally involved in their religion. Because of the upbringing of the second house, Jupiter, 
they become emotionally involved with their higher learning, spirituality, the religious, the long distance travel. But because anywhere the moon rules any kind of house, you're always going to see up and down tides because moon waxes and wanes. So one, two, for two months, they'll feel like, okay, I don't want to do this. I hate this religion stuff. But then the, when the moon goes to the other phase, they'll be like, no, 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 no. Let me go back to the temple or mosque or church. Okay, let me pray. Let me read the Bible. Let me, let me read the Quran. They will be like that. So emotionally, you know, the eighth and ninth house are very fluctuating houses emotionally. Okay. Now the 10th house, the house of their authority, what kind of authority they will have their career. Sun rules this house. So this is why they can make good administrators, good, you know, uh, kind of bureaucrats, you would say like administrative bureaucrats, but they also can make good government people, government jobs. They take charge. What is government, especially military? You know, you can take military, you can take law enforcement higher up in the government archy to take care of the matter because sun represents the government. It represents authority. Their ascendant is all about the challenge and authority and taking over people. That's their mindset. So they want to be in a place which represents authority and they want to go there and put their own authority into it. So again, they can be good in government jobs. They can be good in medical jobs because of the fact they are ascendant. Their ascendant is Mars and their Mars is ruling their sixth house as well of diseases. So they can become surgeons, good surgeons, good doctors. They can even be creative. So they kind of can do a little bit of everything. But majority of the time you will see these guys into either a medical field or you will see them in the government field. The two fields that are really famous but and because of the second house because the intellect is so high through the family and and that too that intellect can be opposite as well you know if jupiter is not well placed it can be quite opposite but but most of the time because of their family upbringing they do follow the higher kind of educational learning um their sixth eleventh house which represents their social network and gains it is always calculative okay they always only want to make friends that they can get some benefit from they're about okay what is this person bringing to me and how much is he bringing to me okay he's bringing me this much all right come in oh this person is bringing me this much no i'll just talk to them over the phone so their uh, their gains you know they're very good in gains but the gains fluctuate they're gonna go really up high really down because the eighth house Gemini is being ruled by Mercury and 11th house is ruled by Mercury. So Mercury, which is the Lord of, you know, giving ups and downs and gains ups and downs. One minute they can be millionaires. The next minute they can be filing for bankruptcy. You know, so they, these things can happen with them. Now, when, they're, when it comes to their imagination, their dreams, their spiritual life, their life where they have to give out their energy. Okay. It becomes quite interesting because they love doing that. Because Scorpio, first of all, is a very secretive, you know, nature that wants to know about the things that are underground. Okay. They love knowing about the things that are underground. So when they go, but because Libra rules their 12th house of all these, you know, giving energy, the bad pleasures, the donations, the spirituality, the imagination and dreams. And, and Libra is quite a balanced sign. So they actually love being in that side because they find balance in there. They like to be quite esoteric and they're quite eccentric. So these guys, you know, can if they, let's say, were to make a university professors or sometimes they were to make, let's say, somebody who was very well versed in philosophy like Deepak Chopra. You know, those are the people who want to be in their room, you know, in their little sanctuary studying a book. And because they know their dream world, their their spiritual world the other dimension is will help them understand what they're reading so their dream world that their bad pleasures become very important to them because that is a part that provides balance to them so guys this was my analysis on the scorpio ascendant hope you liked it so if you're new to my channel subscribe above and if you want to more know more about real astrology check out the link below otherwise i'll see you tomorrow man it's been a long day sayonara
Thank you.